so just a couple of announcements before we begin. So this is the first uh, day of Lent, and every Wednesday in Lent, we will be having a small group just like this on Zoom at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. And um, we are focusing on Lent through the eyes of artists and poets and musicians and psalmists. And um, the Wednesday night group will be visual in, um, in what it does. Um, also during Lent every day, um, we will be hosting a Stations of the Cross from San Luis, uh, Colorado, um, as a, a meditation, and our Palm Sunday service will be shot at, uh, will be recorded um, from the Stations of the Cross down there. In addition, um, we're reading a psalm every day for our daily reflections. If you, we're not stopping to take an offering tonight, but just as a reminder that our February mission partner was chosen by our youth group and it's Safe House Denver. And we have um, been highlighting those um, with videos in our services on Sundays. So I think that's all of the, the details. Um, you won't need to have a bulletin to follow along. Um, you can simply uh, be present and listen and uh, we pray that this time is meaningful for all of us gathered here. And I want to thank everyone for, for being here. And we're going to begin with Pam Hennessy. This is Psalm 51, a Psalm of David. Have mercy on me, O God, <clears throat> according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. As we listen to the call to worship, I would like for you to uh, just listen to this tonight. David and I thought about ways that you could repeat after the narrator. But what I'd like for you to do is just listen and let it fall onto your heart.
Maker, we came and shall return into the grave. Be still, my soul, and let it go. Just let it go. Glory to God. A reading from the Common English Bible, Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12. Create a clean heart for me, God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Gracious God, we confess that too often our faith falters. It seems that more and more we choose to live in fear instead of in the glory and power of your love. We have allowed ourselves to become insignificant instead of faithfully fully fulfilling our call. We confess that we are uncertain, unaware, and even fearful of our God-given gifts and talents. And even when we embrace them, we still question, why me? Who am I to be so bold, wonderfully made, and called to such sacred significance in this time, in this context, and within these relationships? We confess that we have fallen out of faith-filled relationships with you and one another. And it isn't just that we've been distant and isolated. We confess that we have also been quick to anger and judge, hurtful with words and actions, self-protective and unwilling to listen and to seek God in one another. We have fallen in love with money and things instead of people, creation, and you. We neglect human need and suffering, and we are indifferent to injustice because it requires us to be transformed. The truth is, we are not really sure about following the way of Christ. We believe it is the right thing to do, but actually following Christ would turn our whole world upside down. And yet, Inside of each one of us, your still speaking voice pulls at our heart with a divine wisdom that invites us into the liberation of a loving relationship with you. 
We confess that sometimes what binds us can trick us into feeling safe and comfortable in the midst of our suffering. Divine liberation is so foreign to us that we fear it is unsafe and unwieldy. Create in us hearts on fire with the Holy Spirit. Heal our pain, fear, and anger, and sustain our courage as we vulnerably reach out for you and learn to live the way of Christ together. As we move into our message tonight, we're going to watch a video called uh, Preparing the Way. And what I would like for you to do is just listen um, with an open mind and an open heart. Uh, the first time David and I listened to the video, we were astounded by the content and hope that you are too. As you listen and hear the message, um, begin to think about what you want more of in your life and write those down either on a piece of paper or on your heart. Let us listen to this video. Lent's a wonderful season of the Christian calendar. Uh, I think it, it's, it's full of, um, it's, it's easy to mess it up. And uh, one of the ways in which I think Lent gets messed up is if we experience it as an exercise in deprivation. It's like we should give up something for Lent. As if uh, in God's family, scarcity is a value. And a lot of us have already lived lives of scarcity where uh, there's not enough, you can't, um, you can't get enough, whatever it is, enough love, enough uh, cocaine, enough whatever life is about, already about not enough. And here uh, this Christian community says, well, let's practice uh, more not enough. And I think that's profoundly counterproductive. Um, I learned a lot about Lent from my wife, uh, who one year decided for Lent. We, over a course of years, decided to take Lent more seriously. And one year, uh, she decided to give up shame for Lent. And the, the notion is, why not give up something that's really killing you, you know? Something that's really a burden that you don't need, that nobody needs. Give up shame for Lent and just try for a week and see what that feels like. Now, I can pretty much guarantee you won't be done with giving up shame by the end of Lent's done, but that's not the point. The point is to have an experience of what life might be like if you were a shame-free person. Just, I mean, you may only get a hint at it the first time through. You may be that all you get is you sort of see with more clarity how much shame you're you're carrying but that that would be a gift that would be having something you didn't have before and if there is any sort of dynamic of hope for living with less shame that'd be a lot to show for a week you know uh, i don't expect a lot to happen in a week i've i used to pray for uh, that God would let me have problems that could be solved in two weeks intensives or one week kind of stuff. And all my stuff is like long-term slogging through it kind of stuff. But well, it's a good practice. It uh, can give you a sense of hopefulness. It may, maybe all it will give you is this sense that I don't have the power to get rid of this by myself. Well, that would be a huge gift to walk away from. Lent, you would, you would have something. And that's, that's I think, the uh, key here is that Lenten practices should uh, leave us in a spot where we, we've got more than we started with, not, not less. Um, so don't, don't give up something that you love. You give up something that's dragging your life down, something that's making your life uh, have less resurrection in it. Because you know? that's what Lent's to prepare us for. A life that where there's more, not a life wherever where there's less. Um, and I think most of us, certainly most of us, were raised in profoundly dysfunctional homes. I've got all the scarcity we need. And we've got that in our bones. We've got that in our guts. We've got. Uh, uh, we we never feel like we deserve much of anything. And so make make Lent a time to experience some of uh, the richness of God's love for you. That, that, that'd be a really good Latin practice. Give up shame, give up fear, 
give up uh, self-loathing, give up self-harm, you know, just just for, for a week and see if there aren't new, new possibilities at the end of that week that you're ready for. And it makes you ready for Easter. Uh, things actually could, could be different. Uh, that'll be a good thing. If you just get deeper into scarcity, it's going to make you ready for the doing more of the stuff you're already doing, probably. You know, living a life of scarcity. supposed to prepare you for more rather than less. The whole spiritual practice of confession, I think, is like that. It, um, it opens you up. It doesn't feel good to be opened up. But um, it's like that text in Ezekiel about God taking away your stolen heart and giving you a flesh heart. It, uh, it opens you up to live in a different kind of way in life, a more uh, ready for resurrection kind of life. That's a good thing. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to put you all in breakout rooms. It will be very small groups. And while you are in your small groups, um, I have uh, three questions for you. Um, the first question is, what do you want more of in your life? And I will put these in the chat so that you don't have to try to write them down and remember them. So what do you want more of in your life? And what are you willing to give up? Fear, shame, self-doubt, so that you can experience the richness of God's love? Where do you see new possibilities? What would you like to have at the end of Lent? And just so you know, we will not return and share any of this information with each other. It'll just be um, between you and your group. Hey, um, a reading uh, from the message, Psalm 51, 10 through 12. God, make a fresh start in me. Shape a Genesis week from the chaos of my life. Don't throw me out with the trash or fail to breathe holiness in me. Bring me back from gray exile. Put a fresh wind in my sails. I know that uh, these conversations were all of a sudden, bam, after hearing something so powerful. And sometimes it's a matter of uh, allowing a seed to be planted that we can see grow um, through the season and through our lives. Um, it was also almost a bam when we heard Psalm 51 read for the first time out of the New Revised Standard Version because it used a lot of words and language we're not accustomed to in our sort of liberal social justice uh, tradition. Uh, but they are traditional words that are associated with Ash Wednesday and, and Lent, if there is no other time in the Christian year uh, for progressives to talk about it, Lent is a time about restarting, renewing, and sometimes that is indeed using the word repent and salvation. Um, and what's true of all of that in the end is the assurance of God's grace. And so God receives our deepest prayers as Jesus told many who sought him, your faith has made you well. We are granted forgiveness, a wondrous gift of new life. And all the people say, we believe the good news. Amen. We say, we believe the good news. The good news. Amen. Amen. And as our passing the peace tonight, which we would normally do on Ash Wednesday, get up, stand around. It would take a while. Um, we're going to use jazz hands tonight and point. So Peace of Christ be with you, <laughs> and also with you. As we move into our ritual of blessing tonight, one of the things that we have thought long and hard, and pastors really across the country have thought long and hard about, is how are we going to 
do ashes? How are we going to put ashes on people's head? Are we going to mail ashes to them? Um, <laughs> some pastors actually <laughs> mailed ashes to people. Um, some pastors were asking people to get dirt out of their garden so that they could uh, mark themselves. Other people are doing drive-by ashing, um, having you drive by in your cars. And as we thought about all of those, we thought what is most important about the ashes is the symbolism of it all, the marking yourself. And so that's what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be marking our heads um, with the symbol of the cross, which is what we would do if we were in the sanctuary. Um, pretend that there are ashes, the feelings and the symbolism will still be the same. I want to start by reading you this blessing. It's called The Blessing, the Dust, and it is by uh, Jan Richardson. It says, all those days you felt like dust, like dirt, and if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial, did you not know what the Holy One can do with that? This is the day we say freely, we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow and let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. As we mark our foreheads with our fingers, repeat after me. From dust we came. From dust we came. And to dust we shall return. And to dust we shall return. Amen. Now we're going to sing our song in all our living. Now hear this reading by Susan Yarbrough of uh, Psalm 51 and let it be our benediction for the evening. Create in me a clean heart, O gracious one, and put a new and right spirit within me. 
enfold me in the arms of love and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Restore in me the joy of your saving grace and encourage me with a new spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming and being together in community tonight and pray that this is a meaningful and hopeful season for us all, especially as we move closer and closer to the day of vaccine uh, and all the things that we hope for that will make our lives whole and full, even though they are full and whole right now. Good night, everyone. <laughs>